Hey everyone, Drew B's Apiary here. It is September the 20th. We're here, out here in the morning. It's about just shy 80 degrees right now. Beautiful day. We've had some awesome weather these past few weeks since my last upload out here in, you know, central northern half of Georgia. Um, I'm out here today because I wanted to kind of give an update as to where we stand as far as the fall flow. That's all this video is really going to be about today. Um, let me set this down real quick. Get my smoker out. So as you can tell, we're at the original uh, apiary yard. I'll be probably going to all of them just to kind of see. Uh, but there has been a lot of, you know, goldenrod. And, I, you know, I've seen on the sides of the road. I haven't checked in about, oh... We can have two weeks to see if any nectar is being is coming in from the goldenrod, but I've been seeing a lot of it on the sides of the road, so that's that's great. It's it's in full bloom. Um, I've also been seeing my bees. The last visit I was out here, they were bringing in a ton of pollen. Even right now, I can kind of see from here is a lot of pollen coming in. But man, there was a lot of pollen coming in. Um, I guess that was a week ago. So. Uh, I'm gonna do just a quick peek and probably just like one of these hives, maybe two tops, but realistically just one of them because that should kind of be indicative of any natural nectar is in fact coming in or not. And I'm gonna do this for all the yards and then I'll kind of update you all as to where we stand then. Um, my goal was to hopefully get a little bit of natural nectar right here before we um, get into the middle of the fall. I've been feeding all my bees, all my yards, pretty extensively at least once a week since I harvested in mid-June so you know there really hasn't been much for them to do during this dearth and hopefully this is going to give them something to do uh, after that we'll reassess once the fall flow is done sometime in October and see if we need to feed any more but at that time you know pretty much the next upload it's going to be a condensing down video it's going to show what I do at all my hives as far as shrinking hives down um kind of going from there so so like i said we're gonna i'm gonna do a quick inspection on we'll, we'll just start with the green one that's gonna be the easiest one to get inside and maybe i'll check orange as well just those two you know at least two of them no more than three and just kind of see where we stand this yard then we'll move to a different apiary yard and we'll check the same there all right let's take a peek inside green anything worth showing you. Probably not going to go into the actual hive body. There is a queen excluder in place right here. We're just going to take a look at the super itself. See what we're working with. Yeah, we're looking for any. I'm not expecting this to have that much you know, it's not like it's going to be full up, if at all. Might not have any work in it. But we're looking to see if there's any fresh nectar. If I have some to show you at any of these yards, I'm going to show you. We'll try to grab like two frames somewhere in the middle. Most likely if they store the nectar, you know, especially fresh nectar coming in, it'll most likely be in the middle. But, you know, right now I'm seeing a lot of bees clustered right here. So it's also a good chance it could be where the bees are at, which is actually where I'm going to go. with their heads in, the cells, Let's see what they're working on. And this all looks pretty fresh to me. I'll try to show that to the camera as best I can. So you can see that kind of glistening in those cells. There's a lot of bees in the way, but that is most likely what they're doing. This is all fresh nectar, so that is a good sign to see. I'm gonna try to show you a different one. 
as I'm going through here where you can tell the difference between what's honey that hasn't been capped versus nectar. But a lot of this is, you know, it's kind of like how easily you can see through it. This has a very clear appearance, which tells me it's most likely nectar. Uh, sometimes it's really hard to tell, especially if it blends in with the cell. Uh, freshly drawn cells, it's extreme, it's very easy to um, uh, notice the difference between them. So, that one looks pretty good. Um, let me grab a completely different one. Probably doesn't have much going on in it. Nope, this is all fresh nectar as well. A little easier for you to see on the camera. That is not honey yet. I know we're in the, the woods, so it's a little dark here, and sun's not high enough and kicking that it's gonna pierce through the veil of trees, but I tell you, that's what we're looking at right now. So that's good signs. That's showing that we're in something, they're working. They are working. So I'm good with this one. I don't need to go any further in there. Here's a high beetle I'm gonna kill. There's another hive beetle. See I'm running around over here. He's hiding under that pile of bees right there. So I'm gonna stop the camera, I'm gonna kill this beetle real quick, and then uh, we'll move to one other hive to show you. We'll go inside yellow next. This one I haven't been in in a little bit. Same thing, just going in the top of the box. A lot of bees. No beetles on this inner cover. Sometimes I always like to check. You'll see a lot this time of the year, a lot of the beetles are starting to get rounded up. And I, I often find them up in the very, very top, either on the inner cover or on the um, uh, telescoping lid under this. So either running around up here or there. And as you can see right here, I've got a, a trap, a little uh, beetle barn trap to try to see if some get corralled in there. And uh, we'll see how that's working here pretty soon as well. So let's take a look at a little beetle barn. See how that's been going for us. Nope, not seeing any dead beetles in here. So I put this trap in here about, I guess it was maybe earlier in the month, early September. I'm trying to see if I'd get some, but obviously there were tons of beetles in here when I first saw and I killed, I don't know, maybe 20 to 30 that were all around this inner cover. Put the trap in. Um, right now I'm not seeing a whole lot, but again, I've mentioned this before, a big reason why I am able, at least in this yard, able to knock back the beetle numbers is with these, those Apame bottoms. So, so these things right here, those Apame bottom boards, and again, for this very reason, this with the diatomaceous earth, these uh, these bottom lids, you know, these these floorboards that come in and out, sprinkle some diatomaceous earth in there, it just becomes a death trap. And like right now, I can already see a bunch of dead beetles in there. They just fall in there, and it's game over for them. So, these Apame bottoms keep my beetles, my wax moss, in control, or you know, under control, I should say. So, all right. So, not much to say on that one. Let's see, I'm going to take a peek under here. Let's see. This super is set up properly. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, instead of the normal 10. Um, this year, I filled all my supers up completely with 10 frames. Next year, 
I'm gonna be doing this. The, the nine frames up top in your super allows for an easier chance for the bees to, to draw the wax out sideways. Otherwise, it's gonna be very hard. I'll pull one out to show you to um, uh, harvest. So, lesson learned there. This was just a uh, example of me learning my lesson for the future. Right, so this frame doesn't have any nectar in it. I think completely dry. Well, I see one cell that has some nectar in it, but I'm not gonna look too far into that. Let's grab a different one. And I feel bad I'm not taking y'all into the into the hive deep right now, but there's just not enough time. I don't want this video to take too long. I always go way too long in these videos to begin with. And I'm just trying to show you the purposes of what I'm seeing as far as a nectar flow is concerned. So right here, we've got a little bit of nectar the bees are tending to or bringing in. That's why all their faces are shoved in there. Cap. Try grabbing one more, just to be sure. And then I'm gonna leave this yard. It's got a little bit more weight to it. Yep. Not much, but a little bit of nectar. It's kind of hard to see again. And why I'm trying to like turn it so you guys can see different angles, but sporadically a little bit here and there. Once I find a frame that's showing uncapped honey, I'll point that out so you guys can see hopefully the coloration difference. The, um, that should make things a little bit easier. Especially one of the other yards is a lot sunnier than this yard, so. Cool. All right, well, I guess we can say, as expected, the flow is on. And again, it's, you know, a lot of people in, in my area of Georgia have been, have been seeing the flowers. I mean, we, we were seeing the flowers starting to come in at the end of August. Um, I wasn't, you know, still no nectar was coming in. But we've also had a ton of rain which has been a blessing this summer, but it also has made, um, I, I don't know if that affected the timeline of when the flow started, but I can tell you that since, for the past week, we've had zero rain. Um, it's just been, you know, nice weather every day, sunny, not overly hot. I mean, some days are hot, but you know, day like today, it's, you know, probably the highest in the high, high 80s. Um, but we're not expecting to get any rain, at least for another week again. So there's gonna be an, almost a two week period of you know maybe you get a little bit here and there but not like an actual full day of rain so not sure how that will affect the flow but i will say one thing it will allow these bees to have more time to get out there and forage so that's good i guess we'll touch back on the next time we do a video there we go and I'll update you all as to my findings. All right, so let's get out of this yard. Not much else to show. Bees are looking good, bees are looking busy. This red hive has still been exploding. They're my most aggressive hive though. They're probably gonna be requeened. And yeah, we'll check back again out here in probably two weeks time and see what the results are. Here we are at our other yard. This one's looking very busy today. Super overgrown. I haven't had a chance to trim a lot of this back. You're gonna do the same thing out here though. We're just going to go through, maybe I'm going to check like two, see if any fresh nectar is coming in over here, which I'd imagine it is. In fact, I think I can see some goldenrod over there. I'll bring the, the camera over in a second. Um, and then there's two hives over there that we're going to check on the queen right status of. One had a queen the last time I was out here two weeks ago. The other one did not. You know, it was earlier in the month. We might have to do a combine today from that previous video. You might have heard me mentioning about me losing queens and uh let's go over there and talk about that right. we've got the bumbles out too so 
So if you remember the last time I was out here, or I did a video, I brought up these two single high body hives. <clears throat> um, when I was here, maybe two weeks ago, this had a laying queen, so they were good to go. This one did not. However, I did put in a capped queen cell in there on the 2nd of September. I said today is the 20th. So most likely, if that was a successful laying, um, or successful hatching, I should say, the, uh, the queen should be out and moving, and she sh probably should be mated by this point. Um, so we're gonna look for signs of, queen, of a queen. If not, uh, I might have to do a combine today. But again, I wanna look real close for sure before I end up combining anything, because uh, there's always a chance there could be a virgin queen running around there. It's just, it's hard to know until we go in, so. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, what did I see over here that looked like goldenrod? Well, unless I was, maybe the sun was catching something else that looked like it. That, that flower right there, if that is goldenrod, that's a weird variety that I'm not familiar. Not all goldenrod, it's not all the same. There's different kinds. But I see plenty on the side of the highway. As you can tell, we're right next to a major road, so. So let's get to work. I'm gonna put this on a time lapse and uh, I'll get to work and then I'll stop the camera and show you some cool stuff if I see anything worth showing. All right, so good news. I'm not sure if you could tell in the time lapse or not, but we do have a queen in this hive. Uh, only thing that's of concern is there is a supersedure cell that's almost capped in there with her. Um, my guess as to why that is is because this is a very small queen. Uh, as I mentioned in the previous video, this is a queen that, um, well, she would have been recently created, probably over the past week or so, um, as far as also her getting mated, but she replaced a fully established queen earlier this summer that was brand new. We had a brand new queen in here in July, which was great. She was super strong, huge, and then don't know what happened to her, but she left. Either she got killed or she swarmed. Not really sure what happened in July, but something happened. And so I'm gonna show you this one. Kind of see her on the inside of this marking tube. She's a really small queen, like really, really small. And that's because she's an emergency queen. Like I said, she was made um, essentially from an emergency cell, as far as I understand, or as far as I could tell from the frame size and how big the actual cap cell was that she was made for that purpose. Um, right here, I'm gonna show you what they're trying to make. And again, plenty of brood in here. She, this, this brand new queen, as small as she is, she's been laying up a storm. You can kind of see right there in the corner, that is a almost capped supersedure cell. Um, but I mean, tons of brood, just absolutely tons of brood in here. So I don't have a way, you know, this is a very bad time of the year to try to make a split. So that is not what I'm going to try to do. Um, we're going to let mother nature take its course. Kind of got to move those out of the way. Not enough room for them. And um, see what happens. Honestly, I don't. I don't think they're going to put themselves in a broodless situation or a, a queen, a queenless situation at this time of the year. But I have been wrong before. Um, so we're going to see what happens. You know, it's also one of those situations where this queen that I just marked, she might um, uh, she might end up coming going out of her way and uh, killing this uh this cell that i just pointed out right here so what we're going to do before i well I'll, I'll reintroduce her into this colony so they're good to go uh i'm still i still need to do i, I saw some fresh nectar not a ton but you know i think i think we're pretty good in it um what i am going to do though is i'm going to give this hive and that hive a boost of bees and directly below where the camera is is a high box that's a little higher or a little taller than I'd like going into the winter. I don't want a three. I don't want any of these ones that are three tall. So I'm probably gonna take a high body from there, do a combine right over here. So basically it's gonna be like newspaper combine. I'm not too worried, the, the queens are below the excluder. So I'm not worried about accidentally taking a queen 
and putting her in a hive that already has a queen. That's not what this is gonna happen. This is me just simply giving resources and hopefully bees um, to the other hive. I'm gonna try to shake out as many bees as I can and get back to the hive, but there's always gonna be stragglers that are gonna stay behind and there's only so much you can do about that. So um, I will show you now. I'm gonna pause the video. I'm gonna get my stuff set up. Um, or I guess I, should, I might as well show you all me reintroducing this queen right here. So let's move the camera. See how quickly she um, she goes into the hive. Let's see. So she's right here. There she is. She's on my hand. I'm gonna put her right there. I'll try to get her to go right into the. She's crawling all over the place. There she goes going right in the box she went right down in she was going all over my hands she either really wanted to tell me something or I don't know what but she was very interested in me so she's in there now uh, I unfortunately don't have an excluder uh, for this hive so that's gonna make future inspections a little um, frustrating but it is what it is so I am going to now do what we call a newspaper combine. So all these bees that are up here on the top, I'm gonna smoke them down. I replaced, I took this feeder out because we're in the flow and I had already started doing this. This this feeder is coming out. Still got a little bit of syrup in there. Take a piece of newspaper like this. I'm gonna set it on top, and then I'm gonna poke a few holes, not too many, but a few, for them to kind of start to smell each other. And if you guys have never done a newspaper combined before, it's very easy. Just doing exactly what I'm doing right here. Poke them little holes. Oh, let's knock the camera right there. And again, now I'm going to pause the video, get a, um, a high body ready so that we can add it on top of this one and then we should be good to continue on with the video. All right, we're back at it. Back to where we were. As I mentioned, we're doing a combine. And by combine, um, I was, this now has a queen in it. All we're doing is I took a, a high body from down the way, um, some bees that I didn't want to have three tall. And I've already poked a bunch of holes in this. Newspaper this is a very common method people do to combine their bees. The idea is the newspaper provides a natural barrier between the bees that this is their home, right, underneath it, to these foreign bees right here. Like I said there's no queen in this. This is just resources, in this case, mainly undrawn frames. Okay. Put the lid on. Okay. Let me show you this from the sides. As you can see, there's a little bit of overhang. That's okay. But the newspaper, it's all just going to get chewed by the bees. Um, both sides. So I said we have bees down here with the queen. This is their home natural barrier the newspaper in between these foreign bees there's some bees up here that were from the hive over there they don't really know each other they normally would not want to be together but because this newspaper acts as a little barrier and i poked a few holes in it the idea is they're going to chew through this okay both sides so these bees are going to chew down 
these bees down here are gonna chew up and then by the time they get together you know hopefully it shouldn't be so much of fighting as much as it should be a handshake once it gets in there so they'll have smelled each other they won't you know it won't be like complete strangers to one another and they should be just fine so um you know pretty much once i come back out here in a week or so if there's any leftover newspaper i'm just going to remove it uh and yeah that's pretty much it so let me put the lid back on this Okay, we've got our lid on. We're queen right. I use all my bricks in a horizontal fashion if they're queen right. That just helps me know if I have any sort of, if I have any problems, if I, if I know a hive is not queen right, I go vertically. And that helps me know from front to back that this hive needs work, so. Yeah, so now we can finally switch that block around. So good stuff there. We're gonna do the same with this hive right here. I'm probably going to take a box from either this one or the one down there on the end the way it's looking it's probably gonna end up being this one make things easier and i did see some nectar not a whole lot but as i was going through those frames over there i could see some so you know like i said we're in the flow uh i don't think i need to do much else with this video like i said i just showed you that i honestly expected coming out here thinking i was gonna have to do a combine of taking this entire hive and its resources right and putting it together with this one i'm very happy that i don't have to do that today we will see what happens with that super procedure that's in there but again there's no point in doing a split with it you know normally when i see almost capped cells like that i will i'll make a split but we are almost in october folks and that hive would be um in a lot of trouble overwintering as a two frame uh, I mean, even to get them to five frame status, which is kind of the bare minimum going into the winter, that would be very tough for me to do and I don't want to risk it. So I'm going to let mother nature do its, do its thing. And uh, I, I have a feeling they'll be just fine. I'm not too worried about that. So they know it's what. All right, but um, yeah, other than that, that's pretty much it. Uh, I'll wrap things up out here and hopefully by the next video, uh, it'll be an update on the end of the fall flow, but you know, comment below. Let me know what it's looking like in your area and um, wish you all the best and, you know, enjoy the fall. Enjoy the cooler weather that we've got coming in and um, all the great time of the, you know, this fall season ahead. You know, we've got Halloween, Thanksgiving, Christmas, everything coming up. So this is, in my opinion, beekeeping's winding down, but this is a great time. You can kind of just sit back and actually enjoy not only being time, spending time with your family, but just spending time seeing all your hard work and getting your bees ready to pretty much just be put set, set in place and not doing anything else, um, getting ready for the winter. So, all right, without further ado, I will talk to you all later. Y'all have a great week. Take care and talk to you soon.